Muy bien, a esta hora nos encontramos con el doctor Saud Abdu Ghani. Es el doctor Cool, el hombre que revolucionó el mundo del deporte a través del flujo de aire, del aire acondicionado. Doctor, thank you very much for being with us in W Radio. And the first question would be, how did you realize that you can revolutionize the world of sport with air? Uh, hello to you and your listeners, and hello to all uh, like uh, South America and Hispanic uh, nations. So, um, um, you know, uh, in our area, we are known to be uh, dry and, and hot, and we wanted these stadiums to, to be functional 24-7. Uh, we cannot just design stadiums only for one month. We have to make sure that these stadiums are functional for the next 100 years, all year round. And that's why we had to, uh, because our, um, our environment is a little bit harsh, we wanted to make sure that these uh, stadiums are functional. And to make them functional, that means we need to make them air conditioned. Just give me a minute, please. I'll translate really fast. Yes. Nos dice que cuando se dieron cuenta que tenían que construir los estadios, pensaron que tenían que ser estadios que no solamente fueran para el evento de fútbol, en este caso el Mundial, sino que duraran durante 100 años y que fueran realmente funcionales. Doctor, about the sport and the World Cup, how it has been that uh, the players have said maybe it's too hot or too, or too cold, how do you control this? And so for the players, we don't control temperature, we control the amount of moisture in the air, because players, they, they, they exert a lot of physical work, So uh, we don't have computers in our bodies to say if Messi, for example, wanted to catch the ball uh, in the next uh, 25 meters, he will send uh, his brain will send uh, you know uh, a, a message to the rest of his body and say uh, I need to perform this move. I need 25 calories. No, we always burn more than what we need. So that heat must be coming out from the player's body through sweat, and you can see them in the stadium sweating. And um, if the weather is cool but is humid, it's still dangerous for the players. Why? Because the sweat will not evaporate. So then the heat will be trapped uh, inside, uh, inside the players and they can snap. They have thermal in injury. So that's why in the, for the players, we don't control temperature. We control, uh, we control more uh, humidity. About 70% of what we control is humidity. And another 30% is temperature. And that's what we control for the players. Le preguntamos al doctor sobre cómo controlan la temperatura dentro del campo de juego para los jugadores y lo que nos dice es que es imposible controlar la temperatura dentro del campo porque sería muy peligroso para los jugadores puesto que están quemando una, una cantidad grande de calorías y se podría llegar a complicar la situación de la salud. Sin embargo, dice que lo que controlan es la cantidad de humedad, de humedad 70% de humedad, 30% de temperatura. Por último, doctor... Eh, ¿Se da cuenta usted que han revolucionado el mundo del deporte y sobre todo el tema del dinero, el costo? ¿Cuánto puede costar esto para otros países? Doctor, did you realize you actually revolutionized the world of sport with this system? And second, how much it could cost to implement this in other countries? Okay, so um, uh, Qatar wanted to put this as a legacy for this tournament and we're open and we're ready to help other nations who are interested Uh, to use the same technology to upgrade their existing stadiums or to make new facilities uh, as well. Uh, how much it costs depends on, on the stadium and, um, you know, the capacity of the stadium, how, how many people uh, will be in the stadium. But in any um, uh, project, construction project, most of the money goes to the structure and steel. So it's not, uh, it's not costing too much. It costs about 20% of any project, roughly. Lo que nos dice el doctor sobre el costo es que básicamente lo que cuesta es el acero, la construcción del estadio, porque el sistema no es muy costoso y quizá lo más importante es que Qatar ha decidido darle apertura al mundo para que pueda venir aquí e implementar esto y puedan aprender de ello. Doctor, muchas gracias. Doctor, thank you very much for being with us. It's a pleasure to meet you. Was, uh, was thank you in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Hispanic. What is it? Thank gracias. you. Gracias, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> gracias, gracias. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.